Hi, I'm Callum from Town Valley Motorhomes and this is a handover of an Auto Trail Tracker ETS. So as we start the walk around on the driver's side of the motorhome first, the first point you get to is your duty water outfit. So this is your grey water. So this is anything that you've put down a plug hole. So shower water, kitchen sink and hand basin all goes into here. And on the way out of your site, you've got a lever on the side, you drive over the grid, open it up, and you want to allow this to drain out. You don't want to be travelling around with the added weight of dirty water, because it's got no use after it's been used. Get rid of it, it'll mean you light down your payload, you're not going to use as much fuel, and you might, because if you're heavy and you've got water on board as well, especially dirty water, you may be over your payload. So get rid of it, and then you always light, and you can put more bits and pieces on board. Here is how you connect the vehicle up to mains electric, if you're on a site or you're charging it at home. So you get your hooker blade, lift the collar so you expose it like so, and slide it on to the motorhome first, then hook the side up. And do it in reverse order when unhooking, along with pushing the blue lever down in the left hand corner to release the hooker blade safely from the motorhome. When heating your water on gas, you need to take your cover off to allow the fumes out through the flue. If you don't, you'll get a red light on, which either means your gas isn't turned on or you have left the cover on. But when you start travelling, put the cover on to avoid behind here getting dirty. But this is only for when heating the water using gas. Cover, flip it on to take it off, hand on the top, thumb in the middle, peel it off. You hear it there clicking because we've got it on, it's just ignited again. And pop this in the driver's door pocket and before you leave just pop it back on external shower point so in the van there'll be fittings for this it's a bullfinch fitting so it connects in you can mix the water from hot and cold but making sure that the hot water system has been on previously otherwise you won't have any hot water you'll just have cold and ensuring that the pumps aren't to get a pressurized flow of water you can then hose the dog off the boots the bikes all from here all your outside locks are opened by the habitation key which is this key here and this is your cassette so push both pins in on the locker door and then I release the cassette, lift the orange handle and slide the cassette out of the motorhome. You can then either carry it or you can wheel it to your waste disposal point, which is normally beside your toilet block. And then to empty, you take the grey cap off, so unscrew that. Press the orange button when pouring the contents of the cassette out. Once you've, rinsed, once you've emptied it, rinse it. So put some water in, give it a rinse, tip out again. Then this cap is a 120mm measurement stick, so you can put your measurement of your blue or your green in there and pop it back into the cassette and push it straight into the motor hole. Here you have some storage on the EPS. So with the West Alloy Square key, And you've got some storage in there for your bikes, not for your bikes, for your tables, your chairs, sorry, um, and your bits and pieces, your wind brakes, tables, leveling ramps, all in there. And just behind the skirt here, this is your fresh water drain off point. So you fill it on the other side of the vehicle. If you're ready to put it away for the winter, you want to make sure no water is left in it, or if you've taken on a source of contaminated water, open that blue tap. Pull it out of its holder so it just lies down slightly and it'll allow the fresh water to drain out of the tank which is about 100 litres and then just clip the tap back up but you can leave this open when you travel just to rock any loose water out of the fresh water tank. On the back of the van you've got your high level brake light and reversing camera, your bike rack which is a 
Pro C Fiamma bike rack. So pull this down. Bikes onto the two rails. Putting the straps through the spokes of the bike wheels and tying them down onto the rail and through your crossbar. So you've got your, your big one being your last bike and your first bike. So you can tie the centers of the crossbars in to hold the top of the bike. And then we do recommend putting some sort of bike lock around the bike frame just to uh, make sure the bikes are always safe and secure when leaving the van unattended. Using the habitation key, you can take off this auto trail badge and behind here there's a nut and you can take off this GRP panel and there's a full size spare wheel behind there on the back of the motorhome. If you're doing some outdoor cooking using a Kadak or external barbecue, you can get a bullfinch connection which comes with the vehicle. You will need some orange gas hose and, and some Jubilee clips to connect it all up and you can connect it to your barbecue and that will use the bottle on board with the vehicle instead of carrying a spare on your external gas point. To fill up with water, carry yourself some ho a hose pipe and some hose pipe fittings as it's mainly just a brass tap on board, but this is where you'd put your hose pipe. So this is lockable, hose into there, fill it until it overflows or until you look on your control panel and see how much water you have on board. Well, your owner will just show you on collection as it's a bit windy today. Any wind speeds over 15 miles an hour, don't use the awning. And you've got an own light, two fridge vents, some storage underneath your bench seat, and there's a plug in the corner there. So if you wanted any power in the awning, you can plug in there and just have the wire out during the day. LPG, so liquid petroleum gas, this is your gas locker. So this is where you would put your bottles on board. We've got our test bottle on the vehicle at the moment to show you how your gas appliances work on the inside of your vehicle and how to connect the bottle. You will need your own bottle. So you want, you can either get a six or a 13 in there, but best option is probably two sixes. Propane is what the vehicle runs off. So propane has got a, a lot higher freezing point than butane which is a lower freezing point which is known as summer gas but to connect your bottle you've got this pipe here which is your pigtail to connect it to the cylinder it's left to tighten right to loosen opposite threads with it being gas and then get a gas spanner or an adjustable wrench and just nip it up so pop that on the top nip it up before turning the cylinder on at the top I'm pressing the black button, which is your crash valve, which allows the gas from the bottle through the pigtail and into the vehicle. Always make sure that you use the straps and strap the center of the bottle. To push it back and strap it around so it's nice and tight and secure in the gas locker. And always ensure that your bottle's turned off before you start traveling. Just so it's safer for you and other road users. Beside the passenger door, you do have your diesel filler, which is opens with your main fade the cat or key you find your tire pressures here so five bar which is 72.3 on the front and 79.5 on the back which is five and a half bar engine battery with a being a decato is underneath the floor so this compartment lifts up and you've got a full size engine battery underneath there so if you ever need to change it it's under there not underneath the bonnet and your bonnet release can be found on the side of the passenger dashboard. And you do have your various fluids. So you have your screen wash at the top here. Flat your screen wash there. Power steering fluid, brake fluid and coolant. Oil filler and dipstick. Earth for giving or receiving a jump start with the battery being underneath the cab floor and then lift this cover up and that's your positive so red on there black on there and it'll give or receive a jump start to the vehicle or another vehicle so to operate your auto trail 12 volt control panel 
You've got your on-off switch here, which turns on your master switch for your 12-volt system from your leisure battery. When hooked up, you will have mains voltage, which is 240 volt. But when you're not hooked up, you only get 12 volt off the leisure battery. This switch here is a power transfer switch. So when it's not on, all your 12 volt side for the motorhome runs off the leisure battery, which is a battery that's designed to use so that you've got two separate batteries, one for the engine and one for the leisure. Should the leisure ever go flat and you want a quick resolvement of power, you can use the engine battery by pressing this button here and it'll switch over to the vehicle battery. But don't drain that. If you want to charge the vehicle battery when stationary, parked up on the driveway, you can turn it on and transfer the switch here which then selects vehicle and all the charge from the charger is going to the vehicle battery so that's great if you want to do one week on the leisure one week on the vehicle vice versa but then we do still recommend you start the vehicle up but when using the vehicle i wouldn't recommend using this because if you do flatten your engine battery when you're on 12 volt while camping you'll not start the engine. Here you have your pump. So you can turn that on and that'll bring pressurized water flow to the taps, toilet, shower. And you do have your owner light here as well. Scrolling through. You've got your EC300 control panel, leisure battery reading, Vehicle battery reading, fresh water, waste water. What's currently being drawn off the active battery, which is the leisure battery. The solar charge coming into the vehicle. Obviously when hooked up, the solar goes to sleep. When not hooked up, the solar will work and supply the vehicle with charge. But obviously it's only as good as the round thing in the sky. So on a summer's day, great. In the winter, not so good. External temperature, tank heaters. So if you are away in the winter, to avoid the water from freezing in the tanks below, you can put the tank heaters on by pressing the metal button and this will stop it freezing if we're gonna have a really cold frost overnight. And you can change the clock, time and set an alarm on here. To operate your controls above the door, you've got your ultra store on gas, which is hot water. So we're making sure the cover's off on the outside of the van and the gas supply is turned on from the bottle. You can choose the temperature of your water, starting off with 30 degrees. I can scroll all the way around to 70 degrees and then to turn on, you just go down to the gas flame. Green indicates that it's on and it's working and you'll hear it click in the background and start working this side you do have your ultra heat 230 volts so that's heating on electric again one to nine this is your thermostat for how hot you want the heating to be in the vehicle nine is equivalent to 30 degrees so you can set that to the temperature that you want and then you've got off one kilowatt which is a thousand watts 500 watts which is half a kilowatt so you may need to use these on smaller sites such as cls or airs abroad where they're not as generous with their electricity and then if you're on a site in the uk as long as you're not drawing too much out the vehicle so as long as you haven't got the mate wave going and um, a toaster or a kettle and you're overloading the vehicle you may have to use these if not you can just use 2000 which is 2000 kilowatts 2000 watts should I say, which is two kilowatts on mains electric to heat the vehicle. To operate your Truma gas fire, so if you are wild cabin to heat the vehicle on gas, you would use the fire. So you do have one to 10 this side, which is your gas selector. So ensuring that your gas is turned on, you just turn this round, you hear it ticking, you can look in the pilot hole there and you can see 
that the pilot light's on, so you just let go of the, the dial on the top of the fire and it'll roar, and that is your fire lit on gas, which you'd use if you're wild camping. Now you have a choice with this control, and this control works on electric as well. So normally you can have it so it circulates out the front of the fire, which you would if you're wild camping, because then you're not using a 12 volt fan to circulate around the bathroom, the front and back of the vehicle. It'll just convect itself around the van. So you've got one to five, being your 12 volt assisted fan fan speed. You've got A which is automatic and the thermostat in the van will detect when the van's up to temperature, cut off and then cut back in when it drops. But that circulates the heat all the way around the van via these parts, the ducts. Off in the middle, convex out the front, but do just be careful that you don't catch yourself when getting in and out the wardrobe or walking past uh, with long clothes when it's convecting out the front because it does get very warm. Or you can have it on manual mode and it'll just keep chucking the heat out until you either turn it down, either turn the fan speed down, turn the heat down or turn the heat off, whether that's gas or electric above the door, it'll just continue to heat the vehicle. But that will use manual and automatic use the 12 volt assisted fan if you wanting to try and get as many days as possible out of your leisure battery when well camping you would just have it on convect out the front and it'll just heat the van up by itself gradually by allowing the heat out the front of the fire so at the back of the van on the eks you do have your kitchen so in the kitchen you do have on the hob one electric hob plate which is this one here which illuminates red when it's on but you've got to be hooked up for that to work and then you do have three gas rings There you do, there you go, there you do have three gas rings lit. Allow all your hob to cool down before you do put the glass lid down, otherwise there is a chance you could shatter the lid. And underneath you'll find your grill. And under your grill, got a full size oven if you press this panel in there's the location of your water pump here you do have your got your red gas valve isolation taps any problems with gas turn the bottle off to be safe but you can isolate each individual appliance from here but these are mainly for when the vehicle is annually serviced you've got loads of storage Balls, cup rack, plate rack, across the back. As long as your pump's on, you'll get a pressurised flow of water. And as you can see there, the steam's coming off the water, so the hot water system is working, as your hot water is very hot there. To operate your Dometic fridge freezer, this button here, on this side of the button, so the left hand side button, turns the fridge on and off. So if you just press and hold, it's completely gone off. So when you're storing it, turn it off. And then you can turn it back on. And you'll notice you've got three sources. So you've got a picture of a plug, which is where the green light is at the moment, which means when you're hooked up, whether you're charging it at home and you want to pre-chill your fridge before you put your shopping in and allow that to chill overnight before you go away the following day or you're on a site 
and you've paid for your electric, you would use two 30 volts, which is the picture of the plug, which is a mains, so it acts as a mains fridge freezer. This side of the button now, so the right hand side, changes the source. So you've noticed I've turned it down to the picture of the battery and it's flashing red. Because the picture, of the, the what the battery does is it's a 12 volt feed off the engine when it's running. And it's designed to keep the temperature that it was previously set at. So that's why I'm saying pre charged at home beforehand. Or if you've gone to one site and you're ready to travel to the next, put it on the battery. Once the engine started, it will act as a giant cool box, keep your shopping nice and fresh until you arrive back on site. And you either go back to electric or if you're wild camping, which I'm going to show you now, you wouldn't have any electric, so you'd have to use your fridge on gas. So you just press again, gas flame there at the bottom, and it'll click in the background, self ignite on gas. And that's what you'd use if you're wild camping up in the tops of Scotland or you're overnighting at a Brit stop or in a pub car park, you wouldn't have any electric, so you'd have to use gas. This is your temperature. So obviously big snowflake is really cold. Little snowflake is a little bit warmer. So you can adjust your temperature. So when pre-chilling, have it on five, turn it down to three or four max once you put your shopping in, just so it doesn't freeze your shopping. And then one last thing with your fridge is give it a wipe out every so often. And when you're not using the van, on the courtesy light here, push the pin in, these two lugs come out. And it holds the door open. As it's got a rubber seal, it would trap the air in. You don't want that. You want to either jar it open or just leave it open so that the air can circulate in and out of the fridge to avoid smells and bacteria and mold from growing in the fridge. To manually shut your door, press this little tab in and that's locked your door from the inside of the vehicle. Go for the handle and you'll be able to open the door. Blackout blind for on an evening and a fly screen for when you've got the door open. And I do have a bin there on the door. To work your toilet, Ensuring that the pump's on, press the blue button, which is your fresh water flush from your main fresh water tank. You'll notice that the fan starts flashing, that's your ventilation. If you just press it till it goes solid so it's not flashing, you'll be able to flush your toilet. Put a small amount of water in the toilet before you use it, which just helps lubricate the seal between the blade and the top of the cassette. And then before you use the toilet, open the blade. You can now use the toilet. After use, give it a good flush. And then close the blade back. So now you can get the cassette out when it indicates that it's full. And it'll indicate that it's full with three green lights underneath the picture of the cassette. Toiletry cabinet, toiletry cabinet, light switch for the bathroom lights, hanging reel for wet towels, wet coats, also doubles up as extra room in your, for a wardrobe so you can hang things up there on hangers if you're going away on a longer journey and you're not going to use your shower because some people do, some people don't depending on how nice the sites are they go to. Tie your shower screen back before travelling with the trap with the turnbuckle here. And when you're not using the van and you're winterizing it, more so when you're winterizing it, you want to unscrew the shower head from the hose and lie this hose down in the shower tray with the mixer taps throughout the van left open, just so no water coils up and potentially freezes in here. Little sticker on the back there that just gives you a reminder to use no harsh chemicals on any of the shower tray or the sink just because the way it's been coated harsh bleaches and things will take the shine off it and it will start to go yellow and it'll get rid of the glossy white finish so just a soapy water mild liquid with a microfiber no scourers or anything because you'll damage the shower tray and shower surround as well as the sink and then you'll have to get them speed coated and sprayed and they'll never look the same 
but they will go back to a glossy white finish. So if you lift the panel here in the bottom of the wardrobe floor directly behind the fire you'll find the location of your boiler. So your boiler holds 10 litres of water in here at any one time and when you put the pump on and you or should I say once you fill the fresh water tank and you put the pump on and you turn the tap to the hot side it transfers the water into here fills it you put the heating on and the hot water on and it or should it, you put the hot water on and it'll heat the water in the boiler up to the temperature that you want and it'll automatically fill it when you're using it as long as the pump's on it'll transfer cold water back into here so in the winter, you've drained off the fresh and the waste outside the van and you've left all the taps open within the van and you've removed the shower head from that hose and lie the hose in the, in the tray to stop the water from sitting in the pipes. You also want to drain this off because you don't want the water to freeze in here. So someone, as it's quite tight, has put a handy little lever on your fresh water drain but I'm going to show you where it is anyway it's right down here but you just lift this up and it'll lift so if you look down here you'll see you've got a yellow toggle and when I pull this it stands up on end you want to put it so it stands up on end so just pull the lever stand it up on end that'll drain the 10 litres off directly out underneath the chassis once you've drained it Put the pump on for approximately 10 to 20 seconds and turn it off. It will just blow the water out of the pump so no water sits in the pump and potentially breaks your pump over the winter when we're experiencing colder temperatures. And that is the vehicle fully drained down as long as you've opened all your water outlets and all your taps. When you come to reuse it, you want to lie it back down. So put it back into this position. Shut all your taps. You freshen your waist, shut that outside and put the hose in and fill the vehicle with water. Come in, put the pump on, go to the cold side of the tap, you'll get a pressurised flow of cold water straight away. And then as soon as you select the hot on the tap, it's going to cough, splutter, all the water. Because it's pushing the air out of here through the taps until you get a pressurised flow. So once that's filled with 10 litres which it's doing as it's coughing and spluttering the water. Once you get a pressurised flow of water from the boiler, on one tap you do them all and then your system is primed as you've got a free flow of water and you're ready to go. But please drain it down in the winter, otherwise if the water freezes in here it's not covered under warranty and it's very expensive to replace or repair a Truma boiler. In the cupboard above your driver's bench seat, You've got your aerial. So should you ever need to adjust your aerial, all you need to do is loosen the nut off, slide the stem up, tighten the nut to keep it higher than the vehicle and direct it with this little toggle. So what that'll do is it'll tip it from side to side, front to back, just to find the best signal where you're at. But look where your other motorhomes and caravans are pointing and always before you travel off, you want to make sure that you bring the aerial back into the van and tighten the nut so that the wind doesn't damage your TV aerial. You've got a booster which is connected to the aerial so you can boost the signal here by changing, turning this wheel to boost the signal. Should it be too strong or too weak, you can adjust that to get the right TV picture. And I would always start off with that before you start adjusting the aerial. In this cupboard is where you'll find your EC500 power supply unit. So all of this is duplicated on the control panel, but you do have a black system shutdown button, which will isolate all 12 volt systems in the vehicle. If you're storing it to stop a 12 volt power drain, but it also isolates the radio on the cab and your reversing camera. So if you ever drive it and think, why is my radio on, my reversing camera not coming on, and you've had that turned off, that's probably why. All your fuses, 
what colour the fuses, the amperage and what they do are all in here. So do carry some spare fuses with you. And this side, you've got your main trip tester. So if you are thinking the motorhome wasn't receiving power, and you press this button and it didn't trip, it's not the motorhome. It might be the lead, it might be the sight. But if it does trip, you're getting power. And you've got your MCBs. All of these will illuminate when hooked up. So you've got your hot water on electric. So should you ever not have any water on board and you've got the vehicle hooked up, you can just turn it off like so. Space heater on electric, which then sends con power to the dial above the door, which I've shown you. That needs to be on. So if you're ever th thinking, why is that not working? Just make sure you haven't knocked this. And your charger, which charges your leisure battery when you're hooked up. Unique build number for each auto trail vehicle. So if you ever need any parts from auto trail, quote that number. We'll be able to put into our system that auto trail give us for a dealer to use and find the right parts for you. And on the track at AKS, you've got two large bench seats. So what you can do is you can use them as singles. So if you want to use it as singles, you can either remove the backrest or just pull the, this forward and drop the backrest in. And you've got a large single bed there and you can do that on both sides or what you can do is you can slide them out in and they meet in the middle and you can either put your backrests in the space i'm stood in or at the back and create a large king size bed